Oh. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe. And I'm Danielle. Welcome. And Merry Mythmas. Merry, Merry Austin Mythmas. Austin Mythmas. That's very hard to say, Joe. But we're super excited to have you all here. So it's our welcome. It's our final gutsy gathering of the year. Yeah. High it's fives. exciting. It's very exciting. We're going to end this year on a wonderful note. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Together with all of you. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Does everyone have their festive attire? Are you all ready to join in the fun? Because I know that I am. I am very ready, and I, I am I am ready for oh, the holiday on. season. Let's see it. I'm ready to I'm ready to to turn the page, and start a new year. Even you guys, I'm both scared and excited. Scared and excited. Uh, you, you <laughs> come December thirty first, you'll see me in my full baby New Year attire. No, or maybe will you not. won't. <laughs> We absolutely will not. We absolutely will not. But anyways, welcome, welcome. Enough of the banter. We are very excited to have you here at Ostomy Mythmas. And let's get started, shall yeah, we? we shall. We shall. We have a great, a great evening lined up here. We've got two great speakers. Uh, but we have some other things to get out of the way first before we get to them. Not get out of the way. Well, to enjoy. Enjoy, to enjoy. Enjoy. But I say get out of the way because they're really the headliners and the feature of the night. Exactly. So. It's not me and my 1950s garland at all. Yeah. Let's welcome Rena. Rena. Take it away. Hi. So I don't know if any of you guys saw, um, there were ingredients listed for our signature mocktail of the night, our apple crapple. And I am going to walk you through how to make it. I've been looking forward to making this because I'm in need of a refresher right now. So I have all my ingredients here and a shaker, but the truth is, is if you don't have a shaker, you could just pour this all into a cup and mix it up with a spoon. Um, but we're gonna be fancy and use a shaker today. So I'm gonna start with some apple cider. I got some fresh apple cider from the farmer's market and we're gonna use a fourth of a cup or uh, two ounces, however you uh, choose to measure. So that's about three ounces because it didn't measure well, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna add in some apple cider vinegar for a little bit of tang. We're gonna add a teaspoon. And because my teaspoon's in the dishwasher, we're gonna eyeball this one too and see what happens. Just a little smidgen of that. And then for a little added sweetness, Another tea, a teaspoon of maple syrup. I recommend using like a real maple syrup. This one is bourbon barrel aged maple syrup from Trader Joe's. So even though it's a mocktail, maybe there'll be a little hint of something, something <laughs> in there. So I'm just gonna do a dab of this. And if you're trying to lay off the sugar, I'm sure you can just eliminate the maple syrup if you don't want to have that. And then I'm gonna, add some ice to this mixture and do the most fun part of making a cocktail. Shake it up and hope there's not a crack in this. I couldn't tell if you said crack or crap. That's what I heard. Oh. Apple well, crapple. Let's hope there's not both. <laughs> and then I have a mason jar because everything tastes better in a mason jar with some ice. So I'm going to pour this in here and then what we top it off with is the highlight of the mocktail, which is some ginger beer. So the recipe calls for half a cup of ginger beer, which is also about four ounces. Here we go. I'm going to eyeball this one too because it's that kind of a night. Give it a little bit of fizz. And then we're gonna add that crapple in. That's some fresh cranberries. Don't eat these, they'll probably give you a blockage. But we want a little you know, touch of color. So we can just like make it look pretty and just avoid swallowing them whole. And just in case it doesn't taste good, we're gonna add an umbrella for good measure. Let's see what we got. Umbrellas make everything better. Guys, it's really good. Oh yeah. If you're not having one, I hope you caught the ingredients. It was on the invite, I believe. You scrolled all the way down, so you should be able to access the recipe and try it for yourself. 
Cheers. 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 Indeed. Yum. I want Marina to have her own um, Food Network TV show because I would I would binge watch that. Yeah, and and that was a great advice she just gave there. Everything tastes better in a mason jar. Yeah. Oh, Next yeah. time I have to drink, go lightly, right into the mason jar. I think that that's probably wishful thinking, but you know, let's give it a whirl. But anyway. I trust Rena. Maybe you need the umbrella, not the just the um mason jar, but the umbrella. The umbrella. I learned a, a hard <laughs> lesson one time. I thought that it would be great to get the go lightly with pineapple flavor, everyone. Mm. I don't recommend. It was one yeah. of the, my worst decisions of my life, but that's yeah. okay. It's we all digress. good. We digress. We do. Uh, we often do, but yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Rena. Moving on to, I believe we have to some rules. We to have cover. some rules. Now that is something we'll just get through. We'll get through. We'll get through the rules. We'll through. I think everyone understands the rules anyway, so. Yeah, they're on the screen for us to review, and obviously they're all in highlight them. Let's highlight them, shall we? Yeah, uh, right at the top, what is said in the movie, we're all here together, uh, supporting each other, and... Zoom is like Vegas. What happens in Zoom stays in Zoom. Uh, you mean I have to empty my wallet into Zoom? <laughs> okay. Yes, and the next thing is, is differences of opinion are okay. We, um, what? Well, I don't agree with that. <laughs> you probably wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, we want everyone to try to use eye language as much as possible. And just to let you know, it's okay to not share. If you just want to sit and absorb everything, awesome. We won't call you out. Exactly. Your presence is what matters. It's important that Your we're all here together. presence is a gift. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, it's everyone's responsibility to make the group a safe, split, a safe place. That kind of goes with uh, the top there. Oh, yeah, um, this is an important one here, Joe. The chat feature. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them if you want to send them to the whole group, and we'll read those out loud. If you don't want to, if you want to keep it anonymous, you can actually send that to uh, Joe and I, which I think we're under double bag in it here. Send that to us. We'll read the question out loud, and we won't, um, we won't use your name. Yeah. And when we are in our groups, you know, one person speaks at a time, um, uh, uh, share the airtime, you know, be, be courteous to others on, on the meeting. Uh, questions must be shared using the chat box that kind of goes above. Uh, and, uh, you know, headline your comments, you know, tell us what the, the topic is that you want to uh, talk about. And the group leader may interrupt you. What? I what? know, he's an interrupter. But yeah, so that's, that's the rules. And uh, let's get going with the rest. Yeah, so I think we're, we, uh, well, I know we have two amazing, fantastic, amazing guests tonight. Uh, first off, uh, we have Donette Meredith, you see on the screen there. Donette, Donette is amazing, and she's done some amazing things as an Austin mate. Start, started off with, she's celebrating her five year STEM anniversary this month, Danielle. That's Truly amazing. I'm at, I'm at eight this year, so rock on. Let's celebrate together. Uh, but Donette is the founder of, um, uh, president of, Pre of Ostomy 101 Inc., which is an amazing website and service, ostomy101.com. They also have an app they, they started this year. If you haven't gotten the app yet, do it. It's free and amazing. Yeah, it's a one-stop shop resource for Ostomates. Um, she's also the president of the Ostomy Support Group of North San Diego County. Uh, and she's the co-founder of an ostomy support group in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, and last month, she's done so many amazing things, but I want to uh, start with this. She has a um, uh, founder of the Awesome Ollie International Ostomy Teddy Bear Project, and she's also written a book with Awesome Ollie. Awesome. So, That's just awesome. It That's is awesome. Nice. It's That's awesome. Nice. She's awesome. So Donat is here, and she's amazing. Indeed. And her co-host of the evening the co-speaker of the evening, if you will. There he is, Brent Real. Brent hails from Los Angeles, California. Do you like how I'm doing mine? I do. Okay, let's see where it goes. Yeah. He's a pediatric WOCN, and uh, he is the clinical director of nursing for Eleven Health. He's one of my favorite uh, human beings, makes me laugh all the time, full of knowledge. Um, he also enjoys long walks on the beach with his dog hiking, volunteering, and accidentally destroying baking recipes by adding too much flour. Ta -da. Uh, Here we go. Welcome, Donette and Brent. Take it away, kids. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much for introductions. <laughs> <laughs> I always am like curious to see what's going to come out of either of your mouths, especially when you're talking about one of us. <laughs> it's also interesting for us. We never know. 
But let's go over some myths, shall we, Joe? Yeah, Donette and, and Bren are here to talk about and dispel some of the myths. It's it's Ostomy Mythmas. So it is. We want to talk about myths. We sure do. Almost sure like do. Festivus, airing of grievances, airing of myths. Airing today. of blockages, right? Oh, airing of if blockages. If I could only air my blockages, <laughs> it wouldn't be blockages. That's a lot of air behind your blockages, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the first, our first myth, Danielle. Yes, tell me. I can't eat the things that I used to love with my ostomy, and the holidays are coming. What will I do? What? What will we I, do? But I, I can't eat. That's a myth. That is definitely a myth. I'm not going to lie. Let's, I put down a lot. Let's let's hear our experts dispel this myth. <laughs> I think it's a stretch to call me an expert, but <laughs> I will say that I am an ostomate and I eat almost everything that I want to eat. Now I have a colostomy, and I know Brent, you can attest to the different the different diets, but I eat everything that I did before my surgery. But one of the things that I have discovered is before my surgery, I was lactose intolerant and some things bothered me. After surgery, I'm still lactose intolerant and those things may bother me. So that, that hasn't changed. I think that here's my thing that I talk about with patients because with the colostomy, yes, you're going to have uh, less diet restrictions, more say than you would with an ileostomy. Um, but that doesn't mean that ileostomates can't eat the things that they used to eat. It just means that we have to look at how much you're eating and perhaps look at introducing these foods in a smaller portion and a small and a more spaced out time frame. So for example, if you're eating a lot of really, really fibrinous foods or fibrous foods, and that's what you just love, maybe instead of eating a huge salad with all those things at once, we perhaps look at individual things and trying one little bit at a time, seeing how that works out. Don't just go crazy all one night and go, I'm going to eat uh, this entire uh, celery stock and I'm going to mix that with this Bloody Mary and I'm going to have five of them. Let's just take a minute. Let's see what your body does. Let's, let's, let's see how it interacts with these things. Um, because more often than not, we have general food guidelines that we give, our, particularly our new ostomates. But what starts to happen is we, uh, we want to see what they can expand with, right? We don't want to have to just limit them from ever consuming those foods ever again. We just want to have them take it slow, take it steady, and don't, don't eat them all in one sitting, especially when you're a brand new ostomate. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had any experiences where someone told you, Donette, that like, oh no, you won't be able to eat that, and now you do? Well, I had the opposite problem. There were so many things before my surgery that I couldn't eat because of my digestive issues that I can actually eat more things now. I just have to eat them in smaller quantities, and it, particularly after I was healed and my doctor told me, you know, that I could eat pretty much anything I wanted, he did say, try little parts first. You know, start with a little bit of that food, see how it goes, and then you can move on. So he, he did say exactly what you were saying. Try one thing at a time in a small quantity, see how it goes. But I eat everything. I try to keep it similar when I'm trying to remember to myself, like, okay, Brent, don't eat 12 chocolate chip cookies <laughs> because that's what's not good for you as a human. I'm not an ostomate, so I don't have that same <laughs> issue as far as blockages. But I do need to worry about things like, oh, I don't know, any other problem associated with 12 chocolate chip cookies in one sitting. So it's just like that. You have to take things very slow and you have to listen to your body and see what it says. What about you guys, Joe, Danielle? Anything that people have told you that you can't eat, but you do anyway? Oh my gosh. Uh, yes, I, I never listen. Well, well <laughs> Danielle tells me something I shouldn't eat, but I, I ate it once and, and I had problems. She, uh, she, oh. I ate an entire apple with the skin and that was not good for me all at once. Moderation, as we just heard with this discussion, is the key. Moderation. Moderation. Also, we joked though, he had to birth the apple baby. So like it was at one of the, we were traveling and he, he was like, I can't even come out of my room. Like there's a birthing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> lots, of, lots of warm compresses. and yeah, yeah. So. But moderation is the key, except when it's chocolate chip cookies. I agree. Right. I think that this time of year, it's just, it's fair game. Yeah. Could um, but I like, I mean, there's certain things I, I was told a lot, you know, don't eat salad. I'm lucky enough that I can do it, but I did introduce it little by little. And I remember somebody telling me, okay, if you have a piece of chicken and mashed potatoes and you want to try that salad, maybe have a little chicken and mashed potatoes and then put in the little couple bites of lettuce, you know, things like that. And um, so I started very slow and I am able to eat it. And that's how I've kind of taken that advice to always kind of mix in other foods and yeah. 
start slowly. I did learn the hard way, Joe. Remember, much like your apple baby, my hard way was when mm, I ate an entire, <laughs> this is not recommended. I ate an entire cantaloupe. And it wasn't ripe enough. And I was too excited. And I was talking while I was eating it and didn't chew well enough. And kids, chew, chew, chew. I think that's the, the lesson, the driving force. Yes. And don't yeah. eat an entire cantaloupe. No, no. <laughs> you know, uh, another myth, another myth, Danielle, is that after you have an ostomy, you can't drink alcohol. That's a myth. That's a total myth. Uh, Danielle has, has some alcohol right here, right now. Um, I don't know that she's going to imbibe. I'm not drinking she might, it, but, but I was we, just showing it. It's show but, and tell. But we have imbibed. I, and, and so let's, let's, let's hear what let's Brent hear and Donna panel. have to say. Well, I can tell you that I've been to enough conferences with other ostomates, hundreds of ostomates, <laughs> and it is completely a myth, <laughs> completely and totally a myth. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with that. I would say as... Well, as you introduced me as, I typically work with a pediatric population. So a lot of those patients, I ask not to drink, um, but for many reasons. <laughs> Though I say, once they hit the 21 year mark, we talk about it a little bit more. Um, I like to also talk about, okay, well, your ostomy isn't necessarily stopping you from drinking, but let's just think about your other things that you may have going on, right? So if you have other diagnoses that perhaps, you know, or other medications you're taking that are stopping you from drinking, obviously we look into those concepts too. But the ostomy itself is not going to stop you from, from consuming alcohol and having that blessed eggnog uh, that has a little bit of extra things in the holiday season. A little if you extra will. nog. A little extra noggin. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe low sugar nog, if you can. <laughs> but you do need to be careful sometimes of the things floating in that, just like Rena was talking about the little cranberries. Sometimes things in, in cocktails, you can get chunks of things and you need to pay attention to what's in your drink. That brings up a great point. We're not talking about um, pina coladas during Christmas season, but let's think about that, right? Pineapples can be pretty fibrinous. Uh, if those don't get chewed well or they get consumed much like the cranberries in Rena's drink, we may experience some problems. So we need to be careful. Very good point to bring up. Certainly a good idea to uh, limit uh, things at first. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, bubbly really things. Bubbly things really, you know, really fill up that cavernous, you know, like beer and, you know, some of these see, bubbly drinks seem to have, I seem to have more of a reaction to that in my gut. It's a good, it's a good thing to bring up, especially because beer with its conception of the actual yeast inside of it and other alcohols that help grow the bacteria that make the actual, well, the alcohol itself um, give it that good time, if you will. Um, those same types of things can feed uh, the bacteria that are living within our gut or what's left of our guts. Um, and so if you happen to have a lot of that residual bacteria left, it could feed it and make it want to produce its own gas. So we always want to make sure that we are checking those pouches. Uh, if you're using uh, any Ostavent, it's a good uh, option to perhaps look down a couple times. Um, if you're going to be opening up your pouches to let the gas out or burping your bag, whatever you like to do, not a bad idea to look down. One thing I like to tell people too is like practice, right? Like don't go into a scenario with a whole bunch of people that you know, you've know you never tried a particular experience with yet and then not know what to expect on your own body. Um, if you can practice things ahead of time, I'm not necessarily telling you to go drink on your own, but <laughs> if, if, you, <laughs> if you wanted to perhaps figure out and see how your ostomy is gonna react with certain alcohols, not a bad idea. Um, that way you can be prepared when you're around other people. Yeah, or, or it's a Mary Tootsmas. How, how do you get to Carnegie Hall, Carnegie Hall drunk? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> My goodness. But you know, I, and I don't think we mentioned this, but hydration too. That's a big, big yeah. part of this. Um, I know uh, right after my surgery, I didn't drink much. Of course, you're not drinking right after surgery anyway, so there's pain medication involved. But I will say uh, I have noticed that um, for me, just having a little le less intestine, a little, um, it goes through me a lot quicker. So I often, I don't drink much, but when I do, I make sure that I have an extra, um, you know, oral rehydration solution with me. So you'll often see me possibly with a glass of wine, but also um, a Powerade. So that's yeah. my little hidden 
Yeah, hydration def definitely key. I know I like to say my wine starts in a box and ends up in my bag. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so definitely drink, drink the Gatorade. And I think and I need stuff. to introduce you to better wine. I think is <laughs> the lesson that we have learned tonight is that Joe the, needs help. <laughs> that's my pra that's my practice wine, Brent. That's my practice wine. Then then I step up when I'm with company. So. Absolutely. We did <laughs> practice is important. It's, it could also be considered your appetizer, if you yes. will. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, uh, Danielle, you bring up a really good point. Carrying around an electrolyte replacement with you, if you know you're going to be probably consuming a little bit more than you generally do, is a fantastic idea. Um, and not even that, taking an extra step forward, if you know where you're going to sleep that night, make sure you have one sitting by your bed so you can drink it before you go to bed. I have them stashed all over my house and it drives my family insane. <laughs> not that I drink all day and go from room to room hydrating. That's not what I'm saying. She's I'm just... got airline <laughs> bottles everywhere. No, she doesn't. No, but she I do does. have Powerade bottles yes, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. it's true. Uh, it's true. Well, that's great. Another myth dispelled. Another myth dispelled. And we have some people here chiming in on the chat that says alcohol causes no problems with my Crohn's or ostomy. Awesome to hear. And alcohol also causes more gas for the Mary yeah. Toots myths. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Uh, well, you know, we have another myth. We our do. Next myth. What is our next myth, Danielle? I'm going to tell you in a moment. Our next myth, kids, is I don't think I can travel with my ostomy, and I'm worried I would get dehydrated. Oh. Well, I've, I've, I've traveled with my ostomy. I've traveled from, from the living room to your dining room here, yeah. so I don't think that's what they mean, though. Yeah. But no, we, uh, just before we jump in, I'll say we, that is definitely a myth, because we travel during non-pandemic times, yeah. at least once a month. Um, so. Yeah, that's a myth. What, Brent, Donette, how do you dispel this myth? How do you dispel this myth? Donette, you wanna go first? I'll go first. Um, everybody I know travels. I travel, Danielle, you travel. Everybody I know travels. I mean, you have to think ahead of time sometimes, like um, packing twice what you're, you would normally use during that time, cutting your wafer maybe before you go, and taking all of your supplies with you as a carry-on, I think is a good idea because what happened to me one time is I had checked all of my luggage and my flight was delayed for almost a day. So I couldn't get to my luggage. So I was very, very thankful that I had my ostomy supplies with me and my carry-on. Another thing that happened to me is, you know, I always tell people take twice as many of the supplies as you need when you travel, um, just in case something happens. Because you're usually, when you travel, eating or drinking or doing things that maybe you don't normally do. I was actually visiting my family in Indiana and I was only supposed to be there a couple days. This is way before COVID. I was only supposed to be there a couple days, like four days. I ended up having to stay because of some circumstances, 10 days. Thank wow. God. <laughs> I listened to my own advice and had packed more. And my husband was calling me on the phone. Do you need me to FedEx you? You're asking awesome, me supplies. No, I'm good. And I just want to say one more thing. I think changing and emptying your ostomy bag on a plane is sometimes easier because you have all those shell shelves right, right there, right? Everything's right there and you can set all your, your supplies out. So don't worry about the bathrooms on a plane. It's no problem. Plus there's extra good suction in the toilet. Can we just talk about that? Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> it's like the best place to poop. And it's such tight quarters that you can't even really fall because you're just gonna hit a wall. You know what I'm saying? Don't be yeah, fair. and if you forgot to put any toilet paper on the rim, literally no one's going to hear you. Those engines are so loud, like, and everyone has headphones in. Like, also, no one even suspected that you pooped because you were in and out in three minutes. You could blame it on the guy before you. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but I'm the guy before you. That's, I blame him for everything. Blame him for everything. Yeah, and it's also important, too, to remember that um, there's certain things if you wanted to, if you had specific ostomy supplies that you're going to be taking on, um, just, you know, be be cautious. Not every TSA agent may act exactly the same as another one that you've encountered in the past, right? So be respectful of, you know, the types of accessories that you bring on, whether you have large aerosol types of adhesive removers or uh, deodorizers or anything like that, just um, even like things like scissors, making sure that your scissors are less than four inches from the hilt. That's 
going to be an important thing to remember. But like what Donette was saying, if you pre-cut your wafers ahead of time, you could potentially limit the need for having to bring your scissors. But um, if you're a new ostomate who's traveling um, and your stoma is still shrinking in size um, from the swelling, it could be a good idea to make sure that you're um, thinking ahead with your scissor sizes too. Um, and uh, emptying your water bottles or your, or your hydration measures before you go through TSA. Again, some people have okay luck with it. Some TSA agents may not be super okay with you bringing your uh, huge hydro flask full of electrolyte replacement already in there. Uh, they may not appreciate it. So consider <laughs> taking your empty hydro flask with you and then filling it up when you get past TSA as well. Yeah, I will it's say like I enjoy the little uh, Gatorade Zero packets and then just, you know, an empty water bottle or if you wanna buy a new one on the other side, those things are fantastic, or drip drop or whatever you happen to use. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I just want to point out, uh, Debbie Fox just mentioned on here talking about traveling through TSA and stuff, and, and it makes it easier. She's just open about her ostomy from up front, just telling them about it before you go through security, and it makes it the process a lot more smooth. Uh, and I have experienced that myself. I just tell them when I go in, and it makes me go it's through very a lot quicker. Yeah, it's very interesting. I think it's hit or miss whether you're going to get, um, and I don't think there's really, some people tell them before they go in, I'm, I'm not one of those people. I like to like see what happens. Um, it, it, it's no big deal, right? They just, you say, oh yeah, that's an ostomy on my, on my right quadrant, you know, lower right quadrant. And, uh, they do the little pat your hands down, they swab your hands and, you know, pat you down and it's pretty easy. But, um, so Joe usually does tell, or, and if he doesn't, he gets pulled aside. I usually, if I empty right before I go and we usually fly pretty early anyways, and I haven't eaten cause I like to eat on the other side of the airport gates. But yeah, um, Mine, I barely ever get pulled through, and if and, you know, if they do say something, it's really quick. I've never ever had anything, and and it's another good opportunity to educate as well. Yeah. When there have been some newer people that have not had um, a lot of experience with ostomies, and they're like, "Oh, I need to get my manager." I'm always like, "Yeah, take your time. It's cool. It's great. Let me be. I'd rather be one of the first people to help them through that, so that somebody else, you know." has a yeah. smoother ride through, so. Absolutely, take one for the team, Danielle. I always like Beautiful. to take one for the team, it's great. <laughs> you know, there's, we're, rap, we're rapidly going through these myths here. We've, our next myth up, yeah. you know what our next myth I is? I don't know what it is. Uh, that I won't be able to sleep over at a friend's house or my family's house anymore because I have an ostomy. Mm, That's false. total myth, mm -hmm. total myth. I think yeah. I, 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 slept, I slept over uh, at my parents' house for a good, I don't know, six months. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> You're yeah. uh, uh, Donette, Brent, uh, what do you have to say? Well, one of the things that I was worried about as a new ostomate was just how am I going to maneuver in someone else's restroom, in their bathroom? How am I going to take all of my stuff? Will it be weird for me carrying bags through the hallway? I mean, so I was a little concerned. I was concerned about odor. I was concerned about a lot of things. And so one of the things that I did is I took a little lunch, lunch pail, one of the soft sided lunch pails, and I just put in there my ostomy supplies. And that's what I carried with me to the restroom with a little deodorizer. And that was fine. Oh, and in that um, little lunch sack, I also had um, trash bags so that I could put anything that it was that was dirty in there and tied up really tight so it wouldn't have an odor. But I solved that problem by a pretty bag. A pretty bag solves everything. A pretty bag does solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> a, bag, a bag for me solved everything for me. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> For yeah, sure. I think that I, it's, it's a little harder for me, like I said, because I don't, I, I don't personally experience this um, myself. I know that particularly around the holidays, I, I, I spend so much time with my family. I would say this year is a little bit different, but most years, I mean, even into my adulthood, and this is probably way too much information, but I actually will sleep over with my siblings in the same house, like on the night of Christmas Eve, because it's just become a tradition. And of course, the traditions within that have elevated and, and, and grown. But I mean, I think that um, when you think about it from a perspective of, of other individuals who don't have stomas even being poop shy, um, it's a, it's, it takes it to another level. So I think that you, part of it is helping yourself realize that most people may not actually care or notice. And if, if you have trouble or want to talk through that, I think it's really good to have a friend that is an ostomate that you can bounce those ideas back and forth off of to be able to come up with fun ideas like with what, what Donette created with her, her own little special bag. Um, I mean, 
I, I think that everyone has their own level of comfort and their own level of humor or even embarrassment, if you will. Um, but being able to talk it out ahead of time before you go back to your family or go to a large event, I think is really important just so you can have somebody to bounce the idea off of and make yourself, make yourself feel valid no matter what your actual emotion is. Um, I went too deep on that one. I'm so sorry. No, I love it. No, I think this myth, talking about this myth kind of plays into the next myth, Danielle. A I, do, bit. Okay. Yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah. I do. Okay. I have one more thing to say though, because sure, I yeah. never don't have something to say. No, I'm bouncing off of Donna's thing. And I will say for me, the biggest, so I had, um, the reason I have my ostomy is from severe ulcerative colitis. So we're talking pooping 25 to 30 times a day, which does not lend itself to sleeping at people's homes. Or I never wanted to go to someone's house if they only had one bathroom, which I'm sure many of you would completely understand that. Um, but after my ostomy, so it was very freeing to have my ostomy and I felt like I could go to more people's homes and do more events and not care about the bathroom as much. Um, but uh, one thing that Donette said was about the deodorizers. That was my only thing and I was like, what am I gonna do, right? Um, but I will say there's so many options out there from all the major brands. I've heard people do Tic Tacs and baby aspirin and so there's, do, do your research. There's all kinds of wonderful ways to, um, to descent your poop. Yeah. You know? And it's all mainstream. It's not just among us, us ostomate poopers and such. Yeah. It's ma everybody poops. And so it's mainstream. Mm -hmm. Poopery and yeah, all, it's all that stuff. There's, there. there's so many different ways. So anyways, yeah. do your research. Lots of good stuff. And if you want, message us because we have a lot of great ideas. Yeah. And, you know, this myth, talking about this myth about staying over at someone's house kind of plays into this next one about the myth of, Gath that gatherings are a no-no well, you know what, what's going to happen if I get a leak you know if mm. I'm out at a, at a party or if I'm out somewhere you know and, and so th these two kind of go hand in hand about the concerns that we have as ostomates so you know uh, Brent and Donette uh, what, do you, what do you have to say about dealing with leaks that can't go anywhere because you might have a leak yeah you know I will say that for myself for the first full year after my ostomy surgery, every time I left the house, I had this internal dialogue of exactly that. What if I have a leak? What if I'm out and I have to empty my pouch somewhere? What if I, you know, all of these what if, what if, what if? And you know what? 99% of the time, those what ifs never happened. But it was most certainly a dialogue that I had in my head. And it was a dialogue that happened every time I did something new. For the first time, I went out to lunch with friends. The first time that, you know, I went to visit my family overnight, you know, it was all of those first times. The first time I went to a theme park, the first, all of those first times is when I had those internal dialogues. And you know what? Most of the time that doesn't happen. But there were a couple things that I did that really helped me dealing with that. For the first year, I carried around a backpack. I mean, a full-size backpack with everything that I could possibly ever need in a year, I think. Right? Just lots of stuff. And that made me feel very secure. I don't do that now, five years later. But for some reason, having, you know, change, ostomy pouch changes and wafers and towels and a change of clothes, I didn't, 99% of the time, I never needed them. But it made me feel secure and more comfortable with it. The other thing that, and it, this kind of goes along with traveling, the other thing that I did was I practiced. Brent, you were talking about practicing. So one of the first things that I did after my surgery is at a time when I thought I was going to need to empty my pouch, I went to a Starbucks to empty my pouch. I practiced emptying my pouch in a public restroom. And I love Starbucks because they're usually one person bathrooms, you know, and you can lock the door. So I did that until I felt comfortable. You, you know, you go to the bathroom, you empty your pouch, you go get a coffee and off you go. Um, I did the same thing when it was time for me to actually change my whole pouching system out. I went to Starbucks again and practiced it. And you know what? I figured out that I didn't have everything that I needed, but I'm sure glad that I did it then. And that helped lower my anxiety level about going out because I'd already done it. I'd already changed in a public restroom. I'd already emptied in a public restroom. And that really helped. So I would suggest the same thing for somebody who's traveling. Maybe your first traveling trip wouldn't be um, to Europe for six months. Maybe it would be an overnighter first. That's a really, really good point to bring up too, is when you are doing something new, practice is what's going to 
is going to make it perfect. I mean, I know that phrase always happens, practice makes perfect, right? But truly, it, there's a reason for it. And when you're thinking about going over, especially if you're a new ostomate, going over to your family's house for the holidays and sleeping over for the first time with everybody else, or just going to a large dinner um, that's gonna be taking a long time, you know you're gonna be there for the entire afternoon and evening. Um, I think it's human nature for us to always think of the worst case scenario. I think that's absolutely human nature. But there are the certain you know, scenarios too where um, you know for yourself that you're experiencing a lot of leaks right now for a particular reason, right? Um, perhaps you're, um, you haven't found your right pouching system yet. Um, your anatomy has changed a little bit for some reason and so you're having trouble with your current pouching system so you're trying out new things to, to, to obtain your maximum seal. Um, these are all important things that you can try before you go to that party. So for example, if you're thinking about uh, changing ostomy systems for a particular reason, yet you're getting a good wear time as it is at the moment, um, maybe not the best time to try a new pouching surface right before you go to that party. Um, maybe you want to practice it first or wait until the party is done and the holidays are done for you to switch whatever appliance system that you're planning on changing over to. Um, we have to remember too that um, oftentimes uh, WC nurses, we will uh, help switch you from like flat wafers to convex wafers or helping you use particular putty or using barrier strips, barrier rings to help get in those nooks and crannies to solve your, uh, your leaking issues. Um, I, I think that no matter what you're gonna be doing, it's important to know that you can practice before you go, you can get a good system ahead of time, and you can even prep some of your materials that you can have as, in the little backpack that you had or the little bag that you had done it. Have things prepared, ready to go. So if for some reason a leak happens to happen, you notice it, you just calmly excuse yourself, go away, change everything up and get back to the party. I think that that comes with some comfort level. And again, that goes along with maybe trying to reach out to some friends and peers to give you that support and to give you that uh, confidence that you can go out and do these things. Because it's not a deal breaker. You, you can go to those parties. You can go for a long time. You don't have to just only go to a party for two hours. Like, don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. 100%. And I, I have two things to say. I imagine that. I have a lot of things to say. Only two. Um, no, I, and they kind of go hand in hand, I will say that. As, as, a, as somebody with chronic illness, and maybe mm -hmm. a lot of times we take different medications that change our bodies, um, or I gain weight, lose weight um, weirdly throughout my life, and there was a particular moment, and this has two points to it. This is the flat versus convex thing. So there, um, there was a time that I had lost some weight and I was able to wear flat wafers and I was in between the two. And I also became complacent in my um, bringing extra supplies. I got cocky for a good eight years, never having any issues. And I'll tell you this. So in between learning that I needed to change the different kind of wafers, because that's another myth that I don't think we were going to get into, but it's true. You can go between needing a flat wafer or a convex wafer. And it's always best to talk to your WOCN, your GI, your surgeon, whoever it is that you reach out to, because there are times just because I was put into a flat wafer didn't mean that I wasn't in convex for several years and then back to a flat wafer. So that's the first thing. Second thing about my complacency kids in between that time of needing convex or flat, I went to the zoo. I went to the zoo. I had a venti Starbucks. We're bringing a call back to the Starbucks here. I had just started a new medication, Joseph, for my diabetes that makes your output, or if you have a butthole, makes you have diarrhea. Okay, so diarrhea times a venti latte at the zoo when I was going by myself in the middle of the day thinking it was going to be nice and serene until I felt the uncomfortable tickle. Always trust the tickle. If there's a tickle, you need to change it. Don't ignore it. I was too busy visiting the polar bears and ignoring it. And then there was an incident. Trust that tickle. Trust the tickle. And then I, I live a good 10 miles from the zoo. I only had to make it out the door to the safety of my vehicle where I knew I could poop my shirt. And that was okay because I learned my lesson. The lesson is do what you need to do and take your supplies with you. But here's a fun story, guys. Here's a fun holiday story. There's nothing to do with holidays, but it's fun. On the way out of the Columbus Zoo, I had to, it was during the day, so there's lots of moms and strollers, okay? A lot of children, stoma height. Not a good combination. So I went to the bathroom. I shoved the leaking hole full of, thank God there were still paper towels because that was a day I did not want to be environmentally friendly 
with the hairdryer thing. Mm -hmm. So I shoved it in and children were coming at me at a very fast pace. And I literally grabbed one by the head because it almost smashed directly in. So guys, that's the, the moral of the story is take your supplies. Even if you're 13 years into this journey, have supplies, at least in your car, at the very least in your car. And when you think about, it, you have to change a different into a different kind of pouching system. Trust the instinct and trust the tickle. That's all I'm going to say. Trust the tickle. <laughs> I can just see all those little kids. I can see all those little kids at the zoo, you know, Mommy, the monkey cages are all the way over there. Where'd this species yeah, come there from? There is a blonde woman flowing, throwing poop. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Wow. It's fine. Especially in the uh, hand dryers, if you're not using the, uh, oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I was so thankful that there was still old school paper towels. That was shoved. I mean, because yeah. like I said, it was literally 10 minutes after finishing a venti, you know, the bucket of coffee yeah. with the new medication. It's not a good, not a good combination, yeah. but I learned a lesson and I can tell a story and I can help. It's like help prevent fire, forest help. fires. Help Only prevent, you can prevent a forest fire. Only you can prevent somebody else's <laughs> which never They don't happen very often, but you need to be prepared. Kids. Yeah, be, prepared. be prepared. Be prepared. Uh, Nobody know, needed to hear that story, I realized. It was a I great story. Someone. I disagree. Everyone needed to hear that story. Yeah. And yeah. we should always continue that story. I, what I was going to say, too, is, uh, uh, Danielle, you had talked about switching between flat and, and convex wafers. Um, does I wonder if everybody on the call knows the difference, too, between flat and convex wafers. Um, just as a brief differentiation, um, flat wafers are just what they sound like. The wafer that goes against your skin um, is of, of a flat surface. It's a flat, even surface. Um, convex wafers are wafers that have a, a little divot built into it as to push the skin of your stoma down to help plop your uh, stoma up a little more vertically. Um, so there's different reasons for using each of those wafers. Um, and oftentimes, um, using convex wafers can particularly right after surgery, cause some, some pain issues, some pressure injuries, and possibly even uh, a little bit of um, uh, breakdown on the incisions that are near your stoma. So uh, personally, I'm always a little bit more careful when I switch to convex really, really fast right after surgery. Um, there's often times that we can try to uh, basically mitigate any leaks by using either barrier strips or putty or or uh, paste, anything like that to try to fill those divots. But um, I just wanted to bring up the difference between those two because I don't know if everyone on here is seasoned or if they're new or if they haven't even gone to surgery yet. Um, so there's certainly uh, a lot of topics between those two wafers. And you do wanna talk with your WC nurse about them because each of them um, have their own risks and benefits. Um, but that's my little spiel and my cautionary uh, Tale? It's not really a tale. Lots of cautionary <laughs> tales here tonight. I enjoy yeah. them all. Yeah, that's great. That <laughs> is great. Them all. You know, uh, we have we have one final myth that we're going to cover tonight. Uh, before we cover that, I just want to say we're, we're calling these myths, and I, as we all know, but I want to say this cl plainly. I think we're all aware of this. They're myths, but they're fears. They're fears that we have as new ostomates, and those fears turn into you know we allow those fears to go. They they can turn into myths to where we all tell everybody, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. Uh, but there are fears, and and all all of these, and we all can probably attest. All of these, we were afraid of doing them until we overcame that myth on our own and learned that we, we <clears throat> exactly can, can either on our own or I will say meeting people or meeting people. Yeah, because um, I know I've learned so much from from having Joe in my life and and having my other ostomy pals and and for working in Eleven Health. There's, I mean, I've had my ostomy for almost fourteen years and I'm still learning. So there's a learning curve and there's just kind of it's a great community to have to be able to open up and ask any of these questions. And if you guys ever have any questions you don't want to ask on here, or even in the chat rooms, we're all available. You can you can find all of us uh, through Love and Health and 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 ask us questions. We're happy to help. Yeah. Go yeah. on, Joe. I interrupted you. No, no, that's that was it. That's what I want to say, and you added onto it perfectly. And our last myth. You know, I actually take this last myth as a challenge. I actually enter rooms now, and I actually shout this exact. I shout this last myth. Everybody can smell and hear my bag. I enter rooms and I say, everybody come smell and hear my bag. False. But, <laughs> but but no, seriously, that is a big concern. It was a big concern for, for me early on. So, you know, uh, we know this is false, but but Brent and Donette, uh, what have you to say? Well, I have two stories to tell you. One is I was standing next to my colleague's desk. She was sitting, I was standing, and I could tell that I was going, to, I was getting ready to pass gas into my bag. And so I just covered it, you know, it was, it was just automatic, I just covered it. And she said, oh, my, my stomach, I'm hungry too. She thought it was my stomach growling. She had no 
framework to make sense of that other than my stomach growling. So, yeah. you know, you think that everybody knows, I know that I felt after my surgery, everybody could tell that I have an ostomy, but no, they can't. And my, the second story is that oftentimes when I tell people that I do advocacy work for ostomy, they go, oh, really, why? I mean, how did you get involved in that? And I go, well, I have one. And they go, what? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. Because I think it's something that we, it doesn't come up over dinner. You know, <laughs> you might say over dinner that you have diabetes or you have a back problem, but you don't ever say, oh, and by the way, I poop in a bag. I do. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> come up, right? So, um, you know, people just don't know. They, they don't know at all. And Danielle, I want to piggyback on something that you said about how much it has meant to you and how helpful it's been to have a friend like Joe and to be involved in Eleven Health and all of these groups that, you know, if you don't have a group near you, and I know that it's weird with COVID and everything at this time, but on the Ostomy 101 app, there's a list of all the different support groups that you can attend for free, just like this. So it's, it's really helpful and it was really helpful to me and still is helpful to me. Thank you mm -hmm. to be able to connect with other people who have ostomies because they understand and you can ask questions from people who've had ostomies for years and it's really, really helpful and comforting. And I feel like any of us that talk about it, if we're talking about it, we're ready to give some advice or answer any questions. And most of us are just such open books. Total open books. And I'm going to piggyback on you again because your wonderful Ostomy 101 app. Again, everybody, um, you know, it's a time of, I can't, I'm not good at figuring mm -hmm. out with cameras, but anyways, there's her events page on there. And there's so many virtual events with the local ASGs, which is affiliate support groups of the UOAA. There's so many different kinds of events, but if you go on that, you can find a virtual, you know, you could be in Washington and join our Ohio group. So if you're not finding everything you need um, just online, try to get a virtual support group. Jump in. Yeah. Dip your dip your toe in the pool. Yeah. Not in the poop, in the pool. Well. <laughs> I, I had one more thing to add too about the smell. Um, so this is something that I always kept in my brain after like just going to ostomy school. Um, when my instructor was, was talking about how uh, all the pouches were engineered, and she just has like the cutest Southern accent. So I'm not gonna try to imitate it because it would actually be mockery at this point. Um, but uh, she said that, you know, they actually studied the fart molecule size and they took the size of that fart molecule and they made sure to engineer the plastic in the bags to be a smaller, tighter weave than the fart molecule itself. Therefore, you can't have the fart molecule escape and you won't be able to smell through the bag. That's like really awesome. This I was is like, Willy she's yeah. Willy Wonka of Ostomy World. 100%. I was like, now I want Oompa Loompas talking about like the size of fart molecules and then giving me chocolate. But I don't know if that's going to be a reality. Um, I just thought it was so funny that one, someone like, I don't know, do they have to take a microscope and like somehow get the fart molecule into like these slides and then look at it and stain them and then see, okay, this is the fart molecule. I don't know. Just to let you know, if you ever join a band, that's going to be the name of it. Fart molecule, just to let you know. <laughs> that's some real engineering there. That's, I, that's more than I ever knew before. I'm excited about this. I went to engineering for the people. Yeah. And you I, know, you you there should only be odor when you're emptying. That's it. Yep. When you're out and about, and you're not emptying and in the toilet. There should be no odor. And there doesn't yeah. even have to be an odor when you're emptying if you use any of those deodorizers. They're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah, and I, I will say, you know, all of that stuff seems magnified to us as well. The sounds, the smells, anything seems magnified. We think it's everywhere, but it's like the sound. We, we only hear it right close to us. And I will say, too, everybody poops. I think everyone's seen that book, Everybody Poops. Yeah. And um, we can do it quicker. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I think, I think, you know, our, it's no different than regular people poop. Not that, never, not that we're not regular people, but you know what I mean. I think my poop is special. Honestly, <laughs> that's just me. That's just me. But yeah. So <laughs> I think we've dispelled all, all of these myths, have we not? Are there, are there more things to add for our myths? I, I think that's, I think we're, we can open the floor to some questions if anybody would like to jump in and ask a question. Or like we said, if you don't want to you don't want to own the question. You can actually message yeah. it to us and well, we will happily. 
yeah, and send them in the chat box. You can send them to everyone or send them to us privately and we'll talk. Um, uh, I don't have a question, but I just want to comment about, uh, you know, while we're waiting for questions to come in, Johnette talked about her, your backpack. And when Danielle first met me, she started calling me, uh, Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer. Because backpack, backpack. I had my backpack with me everywhere. He had like a backpack where he could have gone to New Zealand for four, mm -hmm. four months. At that it was time, giant. It's bigger than him. At that time I was with hydration. So we're, I, I, I would carry two to three bottles, two to three bottles of Gatorade with me at all times, as well as my supplies as well as, as I swear there's like an accordion in there so it was yeah. giant yeah. but so now he just has a tiny uh a tiny little backpack yeah but, that I only care sparingly so. but it's important Joe that you did what you needed to feel comfortable Absolutely. and that's where we all need to be whether that's a backpack or whether that's a suitcase it doesn't matter <laughs> Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and that comfort level can change. And if it doesn't change, it's great. If you, if you carry, you know, exactly that, whatever you feel comfortable. With. And I want to say that I wasn't necessarily making fun of you, but let's all turn back to the point that Joe didn't poop his shirt in the zoo. Danielle <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> so take that backpack with you, even if it's the size of a Volkswagen, whatever your comfort level is. Yeah, yeah. It's all fun and games until yeah. you poop in front of the drafts, you know, mm -hmm. it's fine. Um, questions, uh, thoughts, um, stories, who wants to contribute anything? Don't be shy. And if you want to be shy, like I said, um, yeah. message it to us and we'll read it. Yeah. And we do have some fun activities coming up, but we want to make sure that we, uh, make use of our, our panel here to answer any questions that either you, you came to the meeting with or that have come up during the presentation. So. Or you guys can think of some more questions while we do this next little segment. Yeah, we yeah, we can you. come back to we can come back to questions. Yeah, we, we can, can certainly come back, come back to so, questions. So during one of our meetings over the summer, was it when one of our get to gatherings, we actually had some games and fun. And uh, one of the things that was very popular, we're bringing back kids, we're bringing it back with a special touch. So we're going to bring back the scavenger hunt. So get ready to move about or grab things in your uh, proximity to you here, but we're going to give you some, some categories and yeah. um, maybe do a little timer or something. Are, how, are we going to do all of the categories at once or are we going to do like... No, I think one at a time. One, one at, at a time. time. So there'll be separate we'll trips. See. Separate just trips. to kind of get everyone up and moving. But this year, how many people, raise a hand if, you're, if you have your camera on, how many people have been to the fun white elephant gift parties at a holiday party or, or anything? Yay, yeah. Have you guys Get received ridiculously disturbing and bizarre gifts? Okay. Yeah. So we we are gonna take our scavenger hut in the in the in the way of the white elephant tradition. Yeah. yeah. And so who's who's ready? Who's gonna participate in this? Yeah, how do there we go. I see Sierra is very excited about this. Um and the prize is joy and showing everybody do a show and tell of the strange things that are in your home. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's great. We'll we'll pick a winner. We'll we'll decide on a winner mm -hmm. of that category, and then that winner gets to explain what they've brought. Right? So, I agree. I think that right? that's fantastic. Yeah. So I think we have a couple to start off with. Um, and this is very uh, obvious. But our first one. Are you guys ready? We're gonna give you how much? Like how many seconds? Twenty uh, seconds? Fifteen seconds? Uh, whatever. Well, we, we want you to be safe. If you're getting up and going about your house, don't don't, don't sprint. This isn't. Uh, you're not gonna beat Usain Bolt. No one's gonna beat Usain Bolt. So so just take your time. Be safe. Find the item. Come back and we'll we'll say thirty seconds. Right. But they'll we'll be very graceful. In the theme of whatever you think white elephant gifts mean, which you know usually are just something bizarre and unique. Um, an ostomy or poop themed uh, white elephant go. Whatever your ostomy or poop themed white elephant. I know that you have one around here, Joe. I didn't have to sprint very far, you Not guys. Far. Mostly because I'm Not lazy. <laughs> and I'm hosting, so I have to stay put. But that's okay. That's okay. Take your, Go. Take your time. Ostomy, you got poop, any seconds. kind of excrement. Let's you not. Let's not. Let's not um, discriminate. Ten, ten seconds. You've got plenty of time. Ten seconds is an eternity when you're. Looking for a poop yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh -oh. Time, five, four, three, two, one, and that's time. All so right, it's everybody, you. everybody, hold up your hold up your item to the screen. If you've done the scavenger hunt, hold up your item to the screen. Oh wait, I have to move our chat box a little bit. Yeah, All right, we have so a couple people here. We have some poop. We have uh, we have Dan has some before you go poopery in uh, original citrus. Original citrus, very nice, very nice. We have some 
Um, I can air I'm purifying an air purifying bag. Let's pin that. You can pin it. What is this? And tell us, we're going to come back to this. This, this is something fantastic. I'm excited about it. All right, go back to the, the other view, Joe. Oh, well, I did that. Now I have to figure out how to... Oh, Wait, I, guys, we're a little bit... Nope, oops. nope. Hold on. There we go. We wanted to make this fast paced, but clearly we're not good at this. <laughs> we have some toilet paper. That is the gift that keeps on giving during the pandemic. Um, Katie, I can't tell what you have from there. Oh, is that a deodorizer? Oh, it's a stink free adhesive remover. Stink -free adhesive remover. Absolutely. That's definitely an ostomy themed yeah. item. <laughs> Debbie's got a wafer up here. We've got a wafer. We got a flat. We, we got a. That is a, That's not a wafer. convex barrier ring. That's a convex barrier ring. Uh, thank you. Wow. Deb, all right. You guys are amazing. But hold on. Here's ours. Wait, I got to. How, how do you make it work, Joe? Pinch the hand. That's a white elephant gift if we've ever um, seen it. So are we? Are we the judges? Are we the judges? Or, I or I have a clear winner in you, my head. You've got the winner. Pick. Two. And I'm gonna not pronounce your name right, or maybe I will. Is it Yami? Yami? How do you pronounce it? Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and yeah. Oh, uh, uh, okay. We can do the we can do the chat. We can do the chat. Perfect. Coming up. I'm just excited about this 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 bag of. We have That's two awesome. of those poops. Of course, Megan, our friend Megan, has two of two of the poops. Two Beautiful. of the poops. Hold, hold that back up. Uh, just yeah, hold it back up. There we go. Air purifying bag captures, eliminates odors. I need that for my whole life. Can we that's, just say about that? Yes, that's beautiful. You win. You win. The, you win. I'm not even going to. Awesome. High five. Yeah, Yay. high fives. Thank everyone. you, everybody, for playing that round. Well, moving on to the next round, this is your chance for glory. Okay, are you ready? Something, and I, I came up with this category. Something, and I quote, hideously homemade. We're looking for hideously homemade. I'm going to put a caveat. It cannot come from your ostomy bag. <laughs> I'm out of your ostomy bag. That's a good thing not to share. So we have hideously homemade. I just started the clock, so you have a few extra seconds. You have a few extra seconds. Thirty seconds. Why didn't I bring a hideously homemade item? Have I created anything for you that's hideously homemade? I don't know, but you know we can't win. We can't win. We can't win. But no, it was just I want to. Um, uh oh. So fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. I want to say I love that Lindsay stepped away, and now we just see Ralphie and his. I see Ralphie. His pink, pink. The pink pajamas, bunny. Pink bunny pajamas. They say I made five, four, three, two, one, and that's time. So let's see. All right, see. hideously homemade. All of your friends. hideously homemade gifts. What? Oh, see now I'm not going to be a good judge of this because I don't think these are all. Because we don't want to say that things are hideous, hideous but Dan, they're... I'm not going to lie, that does frighten me a tad bit. Wow. Could you maybe? I might need to hear about a little bit about that. Um, so Sierra, Sierra, you have uh, something. If you can hold that up to the camera again, and uh, the background is allowing, not allowing for us to see it. Oh wait, painting? there we go. Painting? That's it's beautiful. Not, you're, you're an artist. Oh no, it's one of my my paintings that turned out where you just kind of play with the colors and you're not sure how it's going to turn out, and it, it you can't quite see the glitter, but it's so I think tacky. Beauty, so beauty and hideousness are in the eye of the beholder because I Absolutely. find that stunning. All right, do we have any more hideously homemade items? Anyone else? We just got two. We got two on this round. Yeah. And uh, Dan, I'm going to need to hear a little bit more about this yeah, treasure. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give that to the, to the doll. This doll has a story. I, it's, it's, I'm scared a little bit. That's actually made out of a mop. Some, uh, somebody took yeah. a mop and created a doll out of it. Can, oh, we, can we have that up, up close again? Yep. It's both a little bit cute and a little bit disturbing. It has no facial features other than eyes. I think that's what's getting me. It has a mouth. It's just really, really faded. Okay. Oh, I can't see that. Okay. <laughs> and it's just like a literal, it's a literal mop. Your child who just said something about red beady eyes, I feel, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. That's <laughs> awesome. amazing. Putting it in in your house. Yeah, we're going to hide it in my parents' new house. They just moved. So we, we have it out on hand right now. That's fantastic. I like it. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah, I think. I'm I think gonna go ahead and say that you're the yeah, winner yeah. there. You're yeah, the winner. Definitely. Hideously definitely. homemade. Hideously homemade. All right. Next category. Oh. Our next category is something so bizarre you can't regift it. Something so bizarre you could not regift it. Or yeah. hideous or ugly or terrifying, whatever. Something that you cannot. What. It, Mike already has something like he yeah. already he's got it. He had it there. It's like a wow. baby red solo cup succulent. 
I don't know what's happening there. But yes, everyone on their way, on their way. What is this? Yeah. That's the plant from uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, nice. Fascinating. Oh, now I see it. I do see it. Okay. That is oh. strange. And you can't regift something yeah. like that. No. Well, I'm it's fine. Sarah's too, so I might get in big trouble. So. <laughs> oh, you sh that would be a one that you can't regift. <laughs> grab that. I think you should grab that. That's, That's a fun one. The spoon. All right. Yep. Or, ooh, even better. Do the countdown. Get that little one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not doing, uh, it's, I thought you were counting down or counting up. I'm going to yes. call it. I'm going to call it because I don't know what he did with this, but let's hit the stop. Who else has something so hideous or so ridiculous? Megan, I don't even know what's happening there because it's turning into an ugly sweater, <laughs> which lends, lends, it looks like a cookie and then it's a squirrel. What is that? A wooden squirrel? I can't re-gift it because it was from my mother-in-law. Uh, okay. And it's a wooden squirrel that you're supposed to use to pull the rack out of your oven. With its uh, butt? Like with its ears. Oh, the ears. Because I'm yeah. We used it once and we actually burned ourselves trying to use it. So we don't use it anymore. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps you should re-gift it then. Okay, who else has huh? something so hideous you cannot re-gift? Oh, that flamingo. Is that a flamingo? I don't no, it's there's a there's a flamingo with a giant eye. There's it's a pooping. It's a pooping flamingo. Nice. Ready? Flamingo. 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 flamingo number two. Flamingo. That's it. And and you know what? I mean, Dan is in it to win it again. I don't even know what that is. Can we talk about that? It's a cow with chickens on its back. Of course it of is. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> I need a follow up question. Where does that reside in your home? It's on a picture frame. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, a, you got it's like in a, in a dark corner. I'm not going to lie. I'm inviting it's you. It's out, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. We're, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like. I, I feel like I would want to come visit your home what because else? there's some treats. I want to make sure I'm not missing something here. What's Who else here? has something? Anybody else? What's have a, a something that you can you just can't really get oh, oh mm -hmm. what's happening here Brent okay so let's talk about this real quick Please so let's. okay now this is a uh, character character of my grandma and grandpa this was hanging outside their house near their doorbell mm -hmm. um, ironically all of the friends came in the back door not the front door thought y'all appreciate that one now <laughs> when the so on that doorbell when you actually take this wooden figurine off of the wall and turn it around He's actually grabbing her tush. That is, <laughs> you win. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's, I don't know. I think you win. I, I'm gonna go with the also the strange pooping, poop, the pink pooping flamingo with yeah. the ocular issue. Oh, what's happening to the neck? That's what's, weird. Well, it's 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 pooping. Oh. <laughs> I did that several times in my. Car. That looks like my car toilet. Nice, very nice. See, you guys thought there weren't prizes, but uh, Joe's and my dancing is a prize in uh, itself. Oh, okay. Uh, um, we have one more for this round, and um, should we do this one, or should we, we do this one? Or uh, You pick. Let's just pick another. Um, you pick. I Dealer's was, choice. Oh, no, no offense, but I'm, I've got to read your writing here. I know, it's a problem. No, it's because it's so good. It's nice and script, and I don't... Oh, oh, let's do, let's do, let's do that one. Yeah, yeah. This this is classic. Um, white elephant gifts, gifts. White elephant gifts that I've had in the past as a as a kid at my aunt's house. This was always one that I always felt that I got every year. Was what's what's the the worst thing you could give out of your junk drawer? What do you have in your junk drawer at home that you the worst thing that you can give from your junk drawer? The least useful, worst thing from your junk drawer. Something ridiculous. I have something ridiculous. What's building in your junk drawer? Old keys. So, can, and, and while you guys are on the mission to get that, let's talk about Joe's car. Okay? Yeah, he didn't know idea I was going to come up with this. So Joe has a very eclectic collection of items in his car that my child pointed out at one point. So, you know, everyone's got, like, their, their pile of stuff, right? I have chapstick. I have hand sanitizer. I have, of course, like a bazillion masks in my car right now. Joe, on the other hand, my daughter's like, what is this? It was a corn cob pipe. A corn cob pipe, you guys. There was like. You got to be ready to build a snowman. There was like phys anytime. physical therapy deck of cards, like a card. 
Well, if you want to talk about this, we can talk about this. While everyone gathers their items. Because my car, uh, my car ends up being, you know, uh, it's just my car. It's my space. So when I take things into my car, it, it, it can remain as long as it's not impeding my, my driving or impeding anyone riding in my car. He also goes and picks up his groceries now, you know, from like the Kroger grocery pickup. And there's a five foot, um, bill from uh what's it called yeah i have i, I drive a, i drive a kia sedona so i have plenty of space and so in the back i have a costume of bill the bill from from schoolhouse rock just to like build. life size that we've used so, at in washington dc yeah. and never returned and it's been in his car for two years okay so that's been like it's two been, minutes it's been plenty of time so let's see <laughs> what is the junk drawer what did you bring back junk drawer junk gift drawer? okay let's see here up. i have oh i have sauce from taco bell it looks sauce like from taco bell. um hold on you're a little closer is it, here. Nod to me. Is it Yami or Yami? Yami? Okay. I can't. I'm Over the counter. And eardrops. It's eardrops, kids. Eardrops. It's eardrops. eardrops. That's perfect. a good one. That's perfect. a good one. That is one that I would not want to get from somebody's junk drawer. Yeah. I love it. You have some good treats over there. This is fantastic. Where, where, are, you, where are you going I'm, back? I'm trying to, I'm trying to un... And okay. Can, can everyone just see everybody else now? All right. Yeah. Let's see here. We have, uh, Lindsay has something in her hand that it's a key to a car that I don't have anymore. Beautiful. That's amazing. That's a gift that does not keep giving. I just didn't want to go back to the dealership. That's amazing. You know what? If you have to buy one, we almost had to buy one. They were going to charge us $400 for a key fob. So you're sitting on $400 right there. Uh, Katie's drinking wine and has a nail clippers. Used nail, nail clippers. Used I nail would clippers. not want to use that. Donette. Donette has a troll that looks like it might have gotten a haircut. Like, oh my God. Well, no, it gets better. She doesn't have any hands because she's a USB. And with her hat, her hands had to be cut off so that it would fit in to the computer. So this is a troll with no, so no hands. Actually performed the amputation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is, uh, you might be on the winning side. Now there's a manatee of some sort that, that Dan has. What and why? Let's talk about this. Um, it's a manatee as in a tea bag. He's got little holes. You put tea in, little sea tea uh, in. Uh, that's the gift the that I want. That is the gift <laughs> that I want. That's yeah, amazing. A manatee. That's you could also call it a danatee. A danatee. <laughs> I like it. Now, here's what Joe has in his silverware slash junk drawer slash other thing. A stool sample. Can I hold it? No. And it's a little oh. tiny stool. That's awesome. <laughs> and did anybody else, do we miss anybody? Did anybody else have anything strained? No? Not at all? Beautiful. My gosh, there were so many that one during that time. Yeah. That good stuff. Yeah, strange, strange, strange from the junk drawer. I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll have to, I'd have to say the, the nail clippers. And that's kind of gross. Just because it's gross. Nail yeah, you clippers. get to win. And now you get to win one of our dances. Yeah. My kid would be so embarrassed right now. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. All right, yes. where are we at? Do we have I any think, questions? I yeah, think we're done with our crazy in? scavenger hunt. Any questions come in? Yeah, Dan wins. Dan wins. Yeah. Dan wins. Yeah, we're all winners because this was fun. This was, was a fun, fun, fun exercise, seeing what everyone everyone uh, found for their white elephant categories. We forgot gifts. to show this other one. We have, uh, this is actually a really sweet gift that uh, we spoke at a classroom one time and they all put little things and it has inappropriate sayings about, or it says like no colon, still rolling, spoonful of strength. Anyways, it's super cute, but strange and you can't re-gift it. You don't want to re-gift it. You don't want to re-gift yeah. it. That's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Uh, does that conclude the, this portion, I believe? I mean, I think we're waiting for if anybody has any questions or any myths that they think can think yeah. of that we did not go over, because that by, certainly that was not the only group of myths. Yeah. I know one of mine. Can I state one of mine? Say it. I'm going to say it, and Donna and Brent can. Uh, and we didn't go over that, did we? The hot tubs. I always get the hot tub pool sauna question. You can't swim. You can't go in the ocean. You can't go in the lake. You can't go in the bathtub. That's false. Did we go. We didn't go over that, did we? We did not. We didn't go over that. So can we go in our gallery? Oh, you can do them. <laughs> I would say a good idea is to perhaps empty ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're planning on swimming some laps, you don't want to have any lag behind. I don't. Um, but honestly, I mean, it depends uh, too on your 
um, on your particular stoma type and how your your wear time is with your wafer. Um, but uh, generally, uh, most often than not, yes, there, there's not really a problem with you going into water. Um, also, depending on your wafer type, you may need to um, figure out how you how it needs to dry off afterwards. Um, different wafers are engineered a little bit differently sometimes. So some have tape borders, some don't. Sometimes the tape may um, last a little bit longer when it gets wet versus uh, a full hydrocolloid based one. So there's small little factors. Um, and if you have, you know, individual questions about whatever wafer you're using, you can always ask your WLC nurse, you know, what is a component of this that may um, make swimming a little bit more challenging or what should I know about this particular bag after I go swimming to make sure that I still have a good wear time. Uh, some people have to change after they go swimming too. Um, but normally it's fine when you go in the water. I would agree. I go surfing, I swim in the pool, I do everything. The only thing that I do have to think of is I have a bag that has a filter on it. So when I'm in the water, I'm in the water for a long time, hours. So I put those little stickers over my filter so that water doesn't get in or it doesn't ruin the, the filter. I don't know the water would get in, it probably wouldn't, but it ruins the filter. <clears throat> so just put a piece, a little piece of tape or something over that. And salt water is one thing that just, you know, it e eats holes in boats. So it's gonna erode your wafer um, more quickly. So if I would normally get three to five days out of my wafer, probably if I'm in the ocean, I'm only gonna get two. So you just kind of have to keep those things in mind. And maybe even like I do, I plan my trips to the ocean when I'm going to have to change that day anyway, if the waves are good. That's efficient. That's a good tip. Thank you. That's a very good tip. And we have a, another one that came in, uh, the myth of that you can see the bag through all of the clothing items. That's not, that's not true. I definitely can get away with, with wearing many things that you can't see. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I know uh, I, of course, bought into that myth early on, as, as we tend to do. And I, I wore clothes that were much too large for myself because I was dressing my bag and not dressing my body. So Right. And, and like we like to say, like, um, you can hide your bag, but don't let your bag hide you. Yeah, exactly. You're probably the only one that ever notices, even if there's a tiny bit. And sometimes I'm not going to lie. I'm really proud when I'm lazy enough and I sit there and then I show my family. I'm like, Hey, check this out. I didn't even have to get up. I watched five episodes of friends yeah. during the pandemic. It didn't have to get up. Yeah. And there are products and I, you know, Brent and Don, Don I can jump in. There are products, companies that make uh, wraps and different things that can help you reduce that, that profile mm -hmm. if you like. And obviously a full bag is more than, than an empty bag or whatever that, that will certainly stand out. Um, but yeah, there are products you can get if, if, you want to help minimize the the look of your bag, the yeah. size of your bag. So, anybody have any thoughts on that? Jump in. It doesn't have to just be us speaking. Do you guys have any tips or tricks or things that you yeah, do to a, help? We have a, a few minutes. Anybody have any any things? I am the queen of leggings. I enjoy a good pair of leggings that are high waisted, so I can and I fold my bag in half. Um, I'd be the king of leggings, but Danielle yells at me every time I wear. That's true. Them. That's not good, Joe. It's not so. good in public. Um, I had somebody that gave me some of those covers for the ostomy bag, and I mean it. it I don't know. It gave me confidence, but I gave one to somebody else because I had two of them that were the same, and um, her sister had given it to her, and she said she, you would have thought that you had given her a million dollars because she would not go out in public because of her ostomy. Oh, wow. That it gave her the confidence to finally go out because she had something to cover it and didn't feel like everybody was looking at her. So it's simple things like that, I think, that can help. It's evolutionary and everybody's so different. And you can actually, you know, we, we got matching bag covers for Halloween one time and rocked out with our bags out. And, you know, I mean, it, everybody comes to their own comfort, you know in their own time, I guess you can say. Yeah, and um, yeah, bat, there's ostomy covers. There's like the Simply Beautiful wraps, the vanilla blush wraps, stealth belt. Um, there's so many different things that you can use to conceal it or even to keep the profile down a little bit on it. And of course, like things, simple things like some people, especially right after surgery, they're like, well, I don't want to pull on it too much. So I don't want to empty it so many times a day. Every time, and listen, that's just TMI, but I'm going to tell you anyways because we're all pals. I pee a lot, and whenever I pee, I empty my bag. You know why? Because then it makes it nice and flat, and then if I do want to watch five episodes of Friends, I can. But no, honestly, that's a nice way to just keep the profile down, and um, that's my trick. Empty yeah. it whenever you feel like it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And even too, like with, um, you know, a lot of younger kids who grow a lot faster, who have ostomies, it's hard for them to get customized options to be able to make them feel more secure. Oftentimes I tell parents too, like, and this sometimes works for smaller adults, go onto Amazon and buy like uh, smaller tube tops and pull them up. And it helps give a little bit of a wrap around and makes them feel a little bit more secure, a little bit more flattening. Oh, um, but I mean, again, it doesn't always work for everybody, but if smaller frame and you don't want to have to deal with uh, more expensive options, tube top can be a couple bucks on Amazon. <laughs> That's super awesome. It's a nice ostomy life hack. I do. I also do. I also wear for the ladies out there. Um, I found this out by mistake, but it was amazing. Um, maternity clothes, maternity pants. I bought a pair at the thrift store. I bought a pair of maternity shorts because they were comfortable. I didn't realize they were maternity shorts, but they were perfect right around my stoma. And that little, it wasn't the real old school ones, the new ones. Like when I was pregnant, it was a giant, giant like belly, but this was just a wider waist. And it, it did not hurt my stoma and it was right up against it and it kept everything super flat. That's great. Thrift store for the win. Whee. Whee. I use that actual maternity band. Like it's just, just the band that would go on the pants. That was like a cheaper option than buying a bunch of awesome secrets ones. That is true. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome. Life hacks. Fantastic. Who's the little munchkin in the picture there? I need to say. I just saw a little tiny uh, head. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be calling out your children, but I just had to see the cuteness. <laughs> I had to. Oh, how sweet. So cute. Anybody else have any other questions? Any other, other, any other myths? Anything that you want answered before we um, head out for the evening? Yeah, we have a, a few things to wrap up after this. I'm going to call it that's it. I'm going to say it. silence yeah. is it. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's always myths. And as Danielle said earlier, if there's any questions, anything that comes up that you didn't think about here, feel free to, to, to message. Um, and we'll cover some some other stuff of how to contact us here at the end. But I think it's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's it for this portion. I think it's time, um, uh, Karen, I think it's time for the, uh, the video. This is the highlights from our year in Gutsy Gathering. That's for all you speed readers out there, in case you guys weren't paying all attention. History, trusted information, all referenced and cited out. So um, if you have questions uh, more about medications and stuff, I put that there, even though it has nothing to do with the fertility kind of part, but it's related. All right, moving right along. How soon after surgery can I do it? That's the question, okay? Um, I wish we had a polling system so I could see what everybody thinks, okay? It, 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 the average number is going to be somewhere around three to six weeks post impacted emotionally and without realizing it probably having some sort of internal physical reactions as well. Um, I know there are times I thought, oh, I'm fine. I'm doing okay. Um, but what I realized after... Um, because uh, sometimes acute dehydration can come on in different signs for different people. Um, and so if you are experiencing life-threatening issues, then I would want you to go to the emergency room. Um, but if I'm able to determine that you're just experiencing some high output and you perhaps... And maybe for a lot of patients here who have lived with disease for so long, there's that automatic assumption of like, well, you know, you've, you've been here, you've ex experienced this, and there's that kind of skip along. So how do you get to that point that you kind of like... I realized during that time that I hadn't really, uh, that, that I, had, I had let this, this illness kind of completely beat me into submission and it, to go ahead and stand up for a second. And when you stand up, I want you to, if you're not going to stand up, then at least sit up in your chair and give me your best posture. And, and this stand bit, in a bit at the top left is a, is a major part of it as well, which is the fiber content. Um, so the, those soluble and insoluble fibers and this balance. Okay. It is surgery, and it's quite invasive surgery. Uh, even if it's laparoscopic, um, you do need to uh, pass through some muscle layers uh, for these types of, of procedures. And then I scheduled a call with her to meet one of our nurses and set up a care plan with her. Well, just the fact that the 71-year-old was able to get on to this telehealth call and communicate with so many other people at a you know single moment, you know, I just think that's so cool and so interesting that we now have this in my system and it's never gotten better. It's only gotten worse. And that was the diagnosis that, um, or that was the 
the condition that actually disabled me. And so right at the- At age nine, I had to um, get my entire colon rectum and anus removed. Nice. Barbie, but I was finally diagnosed with uh, severe ulcerative colitis. The six years prior to that, I was misdiagnosed with a gluten intolerance. So that was kind of my misdiagnosis. Um, but the truth is, you really only understand a problem when you start connecting with others who have been in similar positions with you. And for me, it's about that human to human connection. Every time that part of that end part gets me, we, we certainly miss Michael. And uh, we are so happy to be having these get to gatherings and all of our other events throughout the year. Excuse my tears and my red nose here. Um, but thank you for joining us this evening and thank you for watching our year in review and mostly thank you for contributing and helping um, just build our ostomy community and uh, I'm just emotional Joe I can't do it yeah do it. pick it up kid pick yeah, it up yeah this is you know uh, Michael Michael is built here at 11 health um, and across the world I and mean, he's not he's touched so much so many more souls than were what here associated with 11 health amazing human being uh, I know we're honored to be a part of of that community that he built and and, and helped, and we're proud to uh, help his vision live on. Uh, amazing human being. Thank you all for being here. Um, the final survey, there'll be a final survey that's going to be sent here at the end of the session, so that'll be sent to your emails that you registered with. Uh, fill that out and uh, uh, respond as you can. Um, There'll also be a follow-up email with more info about the 11 health products and services. You can read through that and see the amazing things that we're doing here uh, and see if uh, you'd like to get involved. Yeah, and of course, if you have any questions, I'm fine now. See, I can suck in the tears mm -hmm. and suck in the snot. I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you guys have any further questions, you know where to find Joe and I, uh, either through 11 right. health or at yeah. Double Bag in it, as well as all of these other lovely people you see on here, um, patient coaches, nurses. On the whole group. So without further ado, unless there's any other questions that came up last minute, anybody going once, going twice? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy New Year. Let's make 2021 a smashing success. And we will continue our gutsy gatherings and possibly some other very fun, amazing events. Absolutely. There may be some more Joe and Danielle dancing. I can't promise you that there won't be. I can promise you there will be. It'll be fun. Um, but <laughs> uh, stay safe. Peace and love to you all. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.